Didum. 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 Okay, guys, I'm filming a reptile room tour today, and I'm super excited to finally show you guys the whole room in one whole video, as well as all the animals and their setups. This video has been probably the most requested video, but also there's some sad news to come in this video, so stick around for that. It's, it's not so cool, but let's get on to the tour of this amazing reptile room with a bunch of venomous animals as well. So this is the entrance right here to the reptile facility. And yes, it's a garage that I converted with these two hands over here. So let's get inside. And boom, the first thing you'll see is I have a double door. That's a security reason for the snakes. Ideally, you'd want to have like a glass window over here so you can check the other side to make sure no snakes are loose. But I know all the snakes are in the enclosures anyway because all of them have locks on and are secure. It's properly labeled. Let's go inside. So as you walk into the door here, you'll notice I have my Venom Defender gloves ready to use right at my workstation. And there's a bunch of cleaning supplies right here at my disposal so I can wet my feet um, and then rinse it off so I don't cross contaminate anything. This is mainly for people who have other reptile rooms that come into my reptile room. I don't use this on a day to day basis because I know I'm not really bringing anything in to my reptile room. So that is a disinfectant in there. Right here I've got F10 which is a disinfectant hanging here. This is my bite protocol station so if anything happens this is right by the door ready to go with a pressure bandage a little first aid booklet and all the bite pro protocols for the species I keep and this over here is one of my pride and joy this is my workstation where I work with all the venomous snakes whether that's helping them with stuck shed sexing the animals or handling them or just cleaning enclosures I can check them out here make sure everything is good to go make sure they are in the utmost perfect condition. I also have a bunch of tubes here so I can tube the animals not needing to neck them. Got gloves, latex gloves to keep everything nice and clean and sanitary. This is a little pad here so the snakes are nice and comfortable and if you ever need to like press down on the snake if you're peeling off stuck shed it's not on this hard surface over here. So this is a puff adder shed, a bunch of the tools here. This is a mask, a respirator mask for if I'm working with venomous snakes that are spitters because spitters, yeah, I don't want to inhale any of the venom that they produce because that venom is pretty sticky and the particles dry up then you breathe it in and you start forming um, an allergic reaction to the venom because you've been exposed to it for such an amount of time so that's the workstation there's a probe kit temperature gun a bunch of different size tweezers as well as hook sticks in this room there's a bunch of hook sticks these aren't the only hook sticks here the hook sticks are all around the room Okay, so in here we have my leopard gecko. As you can see, these are incredibly intelligent animals and she loves to just come out and run onto my hand whenever I am in the room. She can see she's getting a bit of attention here and she's like, hmm, give me some food. Stunning little leopard gecko. I forgot her morph because I don't really mind about morphs. But she's the cutest little lizard and super intelligent. They're such incredible geckos. This is her basic little setup here. I did have live plants, but the LED that was in here is, it's not the right amount of lumens. So the plants were like stretching out to grow. That's, that's the little leopard gecko. Let's put it back in her little cage. There we go. Close that up. If you come to my left over here, your right, we'll see the little table that I convert into a podcasting station, but also I can photograph nice reptiles here because it's got a nice black background, so I can photograph the snakes and it just looks all amazing. This is the quarantine rack with nothing in it at the moment. There is some li a live vivarium I'm busy working on. Hopefully I'll get some nice animals for that in the near future. 
This right here is my cute little crested gecko. Let's see who, if I can find the little guy. Um, the problem with having a nice big enclosure is it's quite hard to find the actual animal. He's over here. Whoa, here we go. This is the cute little crested gecko I have. I don't, I'm also not sure what morph he is, but he's absolutely adorable. He's the cutest little guy and you can see his enclosure here is nice and large. So he's an, he has quite a big amount of space to run around. Sadly, there's no live plants in there yet, but I will work on that shortly. I just added this nice grow light so I can eventually add a bunch of living plants in there and I'm sure he would appreciate that. So there he is. Super cute, he's the only one in that little tank. The sad thing about this is due to COVID-19, I'm actually losing this room. So I need to build a new room up from scratch, which really sucks because this room has so much sentimental value to me because it literally saved my life and so much time, effort and energy went into this. I built it with my own two hands and now it's like feels like it's being ripped away, which really, really sucks. So if you feel to support create a new reptile facility from scratch, I've started a GoFundMe, which is linked down below, and I will keep you updated on every step of the way. But yeah, I need your help, so I would really appreciate it. And if you're unable to donate, please share this video with a couple of friends and just enjoy the reptile room tour. So this is a rack of a bunch of different venomous snakes. All of these are venomous. In here we have a snouted cobra, Nadia annulifera, the male, Murphy. I know many of you guys love Murphy, I love him too. This is Octavia's cage here. Most of my cages, or all of them, I try to make them look as nice as possible because if you have a nice appealing cage to the eye, it does also give the animal so much more life. So Octavia's enclosure and then one of the little Aspidolaps lubricus cowlesi. Um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of the common name. Angolan coral snake or coral cobra. So that little guy's up there. Let's see, I have to get a ladder in order to get up there and show you these snakes. I think I'm gonna take Murphy out now because he just made a little poo poo and I gotta clean that. I also need a hook stick in order to show you this little snake. Okay. And there you can hear a horrible noise because this little cobra likes to dig or it's not a true cobra actually. This little snake likes to dig and then it'll push all the sand up onto the glass rail racks and then when I slide it open, it will be all noisy. So this little guy here is a little male Aspidolaps lubricus cowlesi. So he's an Angolan coral cobra, not a true cobra. As I said, these guys love to bury themselves in the ground. So they have this little rostral scale, which is their scale in front of their nose right there. So they can basically lift up the soil and glide under the nice loose sand where they come from. So these guys are incredibly cute. Not a snake you should tail. Well, you shouldn't tail any venomous snake without the proper training and experience, but this little guy's absolutely adorable. I love him to bits and he's, he's, he's not actually super feisty. These snakes are known to be really, really feisty for their size. The attitude is nothing compared to their size because generally these guys, they'll act worse than cobras. Keeping venomous snakes at this height isn't the best thing to do for your safety. Oh, there's that horrible noise, but he's a small snake, so I'm not stressed out about that. We can leave this hook stick here and we will move on to some of the other snakes. In here, I have a beautiful bull python stripe. The female that I thought, or the male that I thought was a female or was told was a female, even though I produced her in 2013. So she's about seven years old now. I grew her nice and slowly because if you grow your snakes nice and slowly, they're going to live forever. Basically, these guys can live like up till 60 or even more. I, oh, this is one of my favorite snakes right here. 
cute male Mojave, sorry, not male, female, cutest little snake and never misses a meal, which is awesome. She's got a nice ficus bend in the enclosure as well as these heat, or the not heat rocks, but rocks straight on the heat pad to hold the temperature as well as a grow light. So once the thermostat switches off and on, then it'll like keep the heat at a constant and not constantly fluctuate so much and you'll see she has such a nice enclosure that there's a hide back there that you'll never get her out of because unless you move everything in the enclosure she's just exploring now look at the two little guys they're like oh i want to give each other a kiss but they'll probably eat each other that's why i don't you shouldn't cohab especially species that do not come from the same regions or areas this glass, I don't want to chop her head off, so move her so she doesn't come here. And my idea with this is over here, I'm showing like how I wired the thermostat and everything, opposed to all the other thermostats which are hidden away in the enclosure. I just wanted to show everyone how the probe works and how to wire it. That's why I kept this out here. And I think it looks quite nice. Here we have Chimanga my male corn snake. This guy is the coolest little snake for kids to come and handle also because he just loves exploring and he's dug a bunch of little tunnels under the enclosures and he's got hides that side under here as well as a bamboo palm. It's just absolutely incredible as well as all this leaf litter just makes the enclosure that much better for the animal. And then if I close that, I just want to, before we move on to the other snakes, show you what this room actually looks like. So this is three quarters of a double garage. If I go here, this would be the entrance for a car. The car would come in here. So I built this wall as well as that like side wall. So my dad can have like a little workshop still because they gave me my mom and dad gave me this awesome room that I was able to confer, convert into a reptile room. The floor that you're standing on is actually all insulated as well as the ceiling. You can watch where I actually did that in up in the card over here. I got a whole series of how I built this room and how it's come along. I also used a ton of reclaimed material in order to do this. So let's move on to some of the snakes. This in here is my girl Beth. This is her enclosure. She's not currently in here. Beth is a black runkles. She is a Gauteng locality runkles and she's not in here at the moment because the runkles they need to get pretty cold in the winter months. Um, so I moved her from here into the bottom enclosures because the two room costs, the ones over there, the other ones here, Beth is in that enclosure because heat rises. So that's also why I've got these thermostats that are on each level. I don't have one thermostat controlling this whole rack. I have one thermostat controlling two cages. So for a pair of animals at each like height range because obviously heat rises. So if you set a thermostat to control this whole rack and it's controlling this cage. This cage is not going to be the same temperature as this cage. So these two on the same like level gradient. So that controller is controlling them, 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 so on and so forth for every in every enclosure that I have here. Some of the enclosures are on individual thermostats, but that's what I've gotten to so far. I need a sip of water because my mouth is running dry. Okay, so here I'm going to show you an animal that I don't think I've showed on camera before. No, I haven't. I know I haven't. So let's just see where she is. She's a stunning animal. So this is, as many people say, one of the fastest striking snakes on the planet, if not the fastest, but who knows? We don't know how that was recorded. So let's, let's use a double hook. This is why I love having more than one hook because we just are able to work with animals a lot easier. Well, not double hook, but having hooks all around the room. So this here is the fastest 
striking, well, one of the fastest striking snakes on the planet. An incredible Limpopo locality puff adder. Bitis areatans. Bitis areatans, whatever, however you want to pronounce it, but it's basically the puff adder. And why it's called that is because in the fence, they will actually puff and hiss at you, making this loud, vibrant sound like releasing all the air out of their mouth or out of their lungs. So this incredible animal here, there was actually a recent study that was done on puff adders that suggested most avid hikers in Southern Africa, that is, stand on a puff adder without being bitten. That shows how reluctant these snakes are to bite because they're not out there to get you. No matter what people say, these individual animals or every animal has their own individual personality. So like you can see, I'm putting pressure on it there and all it's wanting to do is like, I'm camouflaged, no one can see me. That's basically what they're doing. So another incredible fact about puff adders is they're one of the few animals that are able to do both caudal and tongue luring. Caudal luring is basically when they wiggle their tail like a worm and then a prey item for them will come and like think, oh, it's a worm and eat it. And then the puff adder gets a nice meal. But they also do that with their tongue. And they are so intelligent that they can see different species so they'll know okay this is a frog I will lure it with my tongue okay this is a rodent I will lure it with my tail that's how incredible these animals are super super intelligent and just ugh, I love these snakes so much this is my favorite family of snakes but these are the coolest animals out there you can see there the caterpillar motion with them they can like move in a straight line. It's absolutely incredible. Look there, if I move her back a bit, not like a normal S shape like most snakes, they can do that and move like a caterpillar. How cool. And as you can see, they're pretty quick animals too. You can see how quickly she can actually move. It's insane. So we just don't want to spook her out too much. Lift her up there. These snakes have an incredible scalation. You can come up close and zoom in on their scales there. These guys have keeled scales, so their scales are rough and not smooth like other snakes, like your ball pythons or something like that. These guys are incredibly rugged animals. You can see she's not super happy right now. What's interesting about puff adders is when they strike, they'll oftentimes tilt their head forward like this so they can get clear view of what they want to bite and then they'll go forward like that incredibly fast strike their strike is so fast you literally can say i didn't even see that i was that i got bitten because your eye does not even blink that fast that's how fast they strike listen to that that's why they are called puff adders that hissy there you go, girl. Come get a nice close-up of her going into her enclosure with that caterpillar movement. There we go. So earlier, you know, I said I moved the wrinkles down in the corner here. Well, I'm not going to show you the wrinkles and pull her out just because they're busy chilling in the cool, but you can come see it's nice little setup. This was actually for the male puff adder, but now he's in the wrinkles enclosure just because I needed to drop the temperature quite a bit cooler here. As you can see, I'd switch off the temperature depending on what it is outside because these guys can handle an extremely low temperature and they need that in winter in order to thrive. And the other one is in there, just a simple little setup. Here we have my chair. If you go back, you can see this is basically what I do. I will come here and just admire my animals for hours on end in the reptile room on the chair. And I also use this to sit and film with podcasts. This is another little station I have here for all my tools. I've got a bunch of other hooks, poop scoops, a little whiteboard to mark down things, more hooks, little hemostats as well as poop tweezers 
the feeding tweezers or that side, the poop tweezers or this side, and then I've got my face shield for spitting snakes, as well as some glasses up here. Just a bunch of hooks all around the room, just like we have another hook over here. Always ready to go, so wherever you are in the room, you can have a snake hook on hand and ready to go to be used if a snake decides to be all crazy. So in here we have the male Cape Cobra, Naja Nivea. This guy is absolutely cute. They are northwest locality, if I remember that correctly. I think they are northwest locality. This is the boy, and then this is the female. They are, in fact, clutch mates, so they will not be, you know, going together. I'll have to find different pairs for them to, if they want to breed in the future or whatever. But right now, I've got these two amazing animals up here. I've got another puff adder in here. Let's go to the top rack, which we haven't touched at all. Over here we have my beautiful yellow belly male ball python. The only male with some life of plants as well as ivy growing in the water bowl. All my enclosures, uh, all the ball python enclosures actually have activated charcoal in their water bowl as well as in the cage itself, just to help with air quality. There he is, and a bunch of nice leaves for him. So we'll throw the leaves back there. And then this is the beautiful little boy. He is a bit weird. He goes on and off feed, so I feed him less often. He gets food once, about once every three weeks to a month because then he'll eat no matter what each time and I don't stick to a schedule. He's an awesome animal and these snakes love their enclosures. They are climbing around all the time. Ball pythons in fact love climbing. So don't, don't think that they don't love climbing because ball pythons actually really enjoy it and they need it. It helps muscle development as well as just makes them overall healthier because their brains are active. All these enclosures have some newly added live plants which they seem to really like, except some of them who really destroy the plants, but they are pythons, so they're heavy bodied animals which will destroy them when they lay on top of this, the animal or the plants. Moving on to here we have Lady. And Lady's enclosure is quite nice. Also got all that activated charcoal, hides on both ends, and let's get her out. She's a pretty big ball python. There we go. This is Lady. I've had her for quite a few years right now. Um, I got her as an adult, so I estimate her to be like 12, 15 years old. She's got quite a few scars on her belly from scale rot from the previous owners. She bounced around houses apparently quite often, as well as she has a nice, probably a rodent bite on the top of her neck here. So, but she's doing really well with me and she's absolutely loving life. She loves climbing the branches I give her. I want to add more branches in all the ball python enclosures because they absolutely love climbing, like they really do, even in the daytime, which is weird, depending on each individual animal, they all have their own moods and whatever. But she's a nice big ball python. She did go on a bit of a diet. I put her on the diet, not, it wasn't self-enforced by her because she was getting a bit, <laughs> a bit big, a bit big for a ball python. As not big, but like fat because she was eating once every two weeks, which can be a bit much for a big snake. Mrs. Thumper is a snake that I actually raised up. So she's a bumblebee ball python. I won't be breeding her because of the genetic disability or whatever you want to call it. I've got a bunch of ivy in her enclosure because that's the only plant that will survive her because she's an absolutely mad climber and she'll constantly climb and like just destroy every plant that you have in the enclosure. So this is her. A stunning, stunning little snake. You can't say they don't look beautiful because they do, but you can see she's got a bit more of a wobbly head as well as I've noticed their heads aren't as broad. They're a bit more like arrow shaped, but her eyes are absolutely stunning. She loves climbing. She's almost like a green tree python. I think that's what she thinks she is because she just 
is always up in the branches. I came in here this morning. Where was she? Nope, up climbing because that's what she wants to do. So I promised you I'll take Murphy out in order to clean the poo poo in the enclosure there. So if you come along with me here, this is where I keep my bucket, which houses the snakes when I clean them, especially the venomous ones. So I'll open the bucket, get it ready, and then we got to see where is Murphy. Okay, I don't see him, so that means he's under the water bowl. And uh, this glass has just been cleaned, so it's quite slippery because of how clean it is. So let's get Murphy out there. Yep, Murphy's in there. Most snouted cobras in captivity are actually banded face snouted cobras. I'll show you be Octavia, the banded face female, but I wanted to be a bit different and get different localities of each animal that I work with and not the most common ones so we can have a bit of gen genetic diversity as well. So this is Murphy, he's not a banded face, but nonetheless he is an incredible animal and we don't want him to climb up on me, but this is a snouted cobra. Snouted cobras are the second largest cobra in Africa. And this is Murphy. He can get up to like three meters in length, which is absolutely incredible. Incredible length for a cobra. And they are a true cobra, non, not like king cobras, which are not really the king of cobras because they're not really a true cobra, but they are amazing animals. So let's put him in there. There we go, Murphy. So now taking out my beautiful girl, Aguero, who I inherited from my mentor, friend and brother, Ryan. She's such a special snake and got so much like sentimental value to me because as you can see, this is Ryan over here and she, he's actually in this photo holding Aguero, which is the stunning snake now I get to own. And let's show you her. She's got a nice 2.7 meter by 700 by, I think it's 600 high meter enclosure. And yeah, she absolutely loves it. She doesn't move around like so much, but she does move around. She's got a nice big place to soak here with water that has like a little fish tank heater so I can control the temperature of the water as well. And with these anacondas, you have to continually change the water, which really sucks. I was hoping to build a nice like pond in this enclosure with a whole filtration system that I can backwash outside there, so drill through the wall. But sadly, as you guys know, we are moving to a, we have to get out of this place because of COVID. So we will make a plan with her and built her a new enclosure because she deserves a big enclosure too. So we'll see where we go with that. This is Aguera. I know people see that like yellow anacondas are super aggro and super defensive. Well, why is she not trying to bite me? She's just exploring. She's an incredible, incredible snake. 2.2 meters long, so quite, quite long and about seven, eight years old, Ryan raised her from a little, little worm, can I say? And yeah, she's going to be messing with my microphone cable, so let's not let her do that. Anacondas are some of the weirdest snakes to handle. I can't really explain it, but they move in weird, weird ways. As you can see, incredibly strong, strong snakes. She doesn't get fed too often because you don't want to overfeed a large snake. They can, that really shortens their lifespan. So you don't want to do that. So she eats whenever I feed her, which is once every month, sometimes, sometimes every two weeks. And then it goes off for like two months. It's really like dependent on variety of things. I don't feed her constantly because that's not a good thing to do. So yeah, she's got a huge enclosure. She is going to get really big. And as you can see, such a pretty snake that doesn't bite. I know so many yellow anacondas are so aggro, but because Ryan spent so much time raising this girl up, 
you can see how absolutely calm she is. Little kids handle her. I get my cousins, which are like, yay, hi, and they want to ha hold her, and she, like, is perfectly calm with them. So let's put her back in her enclosure. I mwah, love the snake so much. I just, yeah, so much sentimental value. I can't believe I am privileged enough to own her because she was Ryan's favorite snake, even though he had some of the rarest snakes in the world and some of the most deadly too. She was his baby. And she's my baby now. To the left of me here, I just have a water jug for the snakes to top up water and do water changes. This is the freezer where I keep all of the frozen rodents to feed their bellies. And yeah, that's what this thing is. It does make quite a bit of noise because it's an older freezer. Some more ivy in this enclosure. I did have, this is Splashes by the way, my old or longest ball python that I've had basically. She is the mom to Stripe, which was the seven year old female that I just told you about. She's, she's really, really pretty. I love her to bits. She's a nice light, also a normal ball python, but that doesn't mean they are any less special because they are normals. So that's her. She squished her fern that I planted in the enclosure. So that's why she doesn't have that and only has the English ivy or whatever ivy that is. Okay, so when I take this off, I'm using this as a shield. That's why I've got this little handle that I added to the trash can lid. And now we take Murphy out. Hey boy, just like that. There is the beautiful boy. I know he doesn't look like a cobra right now because he's not hooding up, but that's fine. There he goes. And we can slam that shut and make everything safe. You know, I'm always destructive with my hooks, but I got it. I actually got it. So that's basically all the animals in the room. I didn't show you everything because you've got to stick around and subscribe to the channel in order to see all the animals I have. And if you want to support the Reptile Preservation Institute, please go down and donate to the GoFundMe page because it would really be a biological disaster if we did lose all the animals like it, it would be devastating and that's why I want to work with some of the most forgotten species even if they are not rare but we need to preserve these animals in captivity as well as study their venom because essentially we can come up with so many like an endless list of amount of medications that come from snake venoms and peptides that's why I want to work with these incredible animals so if you feel to help support the Reptile Preservation Institute and building that up from scratch, please go to, there's a GoFundMe link down below. Thanks guys for watching. Hit the like button, subscribe and share this with your friends. Show the amazing animals in this room and yeah.